just want to go over some things uh, about Pestler today with you guys. If you have any questions, please uh, feel free to interrupt. That's what I've been told is the uh, the way things go around here. We don't hold questions to the end. Okay. Uh, so Pestler, uh, founded in 1997 in Nuremberg, Germany by our CEO, Dirk Pestler. 100% uh, owned by founders employees with no outside investors or anything like that. So uh, makes it a great environment for us to get to work in because we get to decide how the company goes. We don't have any outside influencers that are trying to push us towards uh, particular markets or particular vendors or anything like that. We take the pulse of uh, the industry as we see it and we try to fulfill the needs of uh, the users in the areas that they're clamoring for the most uh, features. Um, as it stands right now, the U.S. is the largest market. It's probably also one of the youngest markets we have. Uh, I believe we've only had uh, people in the U.S. for the last five years. Uh, started with just uh, uh, one or two people. Now we're up to, what, uh, uh, 10 or 11? Mm -hmm. uh, no, more than that, like 15? Yep. Maybe? Yeah. 15. Yeah. Uh, we got 15 people here in the U.S. now. Uh, 70 Center of Fortune 100 Enterprises uh, worldwide use PRTG. Uh, we're industry leading 35% uh, growth rate, and we have a dedicated U.S. channel team uh, with uh, gold partners with, uh, well, the uh, our gold partners are CW, SHI, PC Connection. We'll, we'll work with most partners out there, but uh, we definitely try to drive everything more towards the channel than we do <coughs> direct. Uh, real quick here, just uh, network monitoring as a whole and where it is. Uh, right now it's at a global market value of a little over a billion dollars um, and it has a, oh God, help me with that, a compound annual growth rate yep. of 10%. <laughs> so uh, it's a big market to be in right now and it's growing well. Uh, the biggest thing's pushing it. Uh, right now, uh, BYOD and cloud-based services being a big one. Um, people starting to move away from the old ones where you just had like HC, <coughs> HP and IBM. Uh, and uh, CA for the longest time, uh, that was it in terms of trying to get any kind of network monitoring uh, and then tool consolidation as well. There's a lot of freeware tools out there that do one thing really well and you, for the longest time you had to run an amalgam of them to have uh, comprehensive network monitoring. Uh, and our biggest competitors in the industry right now are, are Sol SolarWinds, uh, What's Up Gold, and Engine. Those are the ones we run up against the most uh, when we're doing uh, any kind of a comparison or, or anything like that uh, with uh, current customers or, or uh, our per potential customers that may already have them and are looking to displace them. So moving into the next section here again, uh, my name is Benjamin Day, I'm a senior systems engineer with Pestler. Uh, talking about the basics of network monitoring, uh, it really boils down to two things with PRTG. Uh, the bulk of PRTG is uh, SNMP and WMI. Uh, I would say that comprises probably 90 to maybe, we'll, we'll say 90% of our sensors and what they're based off of. Uh, the rest of them being little one-offs like uh, SSH sensors for Linux or SOAP sensors for VMware, uh, WBEM, things like that. But the majority though is based on SNMP. So we use SNMP heavily for doing uh, monitoring on switches, routers, firewalls. Uh, we do have a handful of SNMP sensors we built for uh, particular hardware platforms like Cisco, uh, NetApp, um, uh, Dell SonicWall, uh, Juniper uh, NS series. Um, and then the other nice thing with SNMP is of course that we can bring in SNMP MIBs from those manufacturers. Um, it doesn't have to be a whole MIB, uh, it can even be just an OID that you find on a forum or if anybody just links to an OID uh, that goes to an individual metric that you're looking to track. We're very flexible when it comes to uh, getting a whole slew of metrics at once or if you just have this one thing you're trying to follow and track on this one device. Uh, the other being WMI. Uh, WMI is what we rely on heavily to monitor everything Windows centric. Uh, so from just basic process and service monitoring uh, on all your application servers to things like Exchange, SQL, SharePoint, IIS, Active Directory, all that fun stuff. Uh, we rely heavily on WMI for that. Um, when we talk to people about uh, how they should do network monitoring, we always want them to go heavy on SNMP and as light as they can on WMI. <coughs> SNMP is very lightweight. Uh, the word simple is in the acronym. 
Uh, WMI is pretty heavy. Uh, WMI is obvious that it was never built to work the way that it's working right now, but uh, that's just the way it is. Um, uh, for a typical installation, we say that you can get away with about 2,500 to 3,000 SNMP sensors at 60 second scanning intervals, and maybe about 200 to 300 WMI sensors on 60 second scanning intervals. Uh, they can be real heavy and real resource intensive on both the PRTG server itself and the target machine that we're hitting. So the uh, best way to do it is to utilize WMI for the things that we can't get SNMP to do, like Exchange, SQL, IIS, uh, some of the deep <coughs> metrics uh, that we get with Windows when we want to dive into WMI and get a lot of uh, things out of Perfmon or running WMI custom queries or anything like that. Uh, and then use SNMP for the metrics that are real easy, CPU, memory, disk, all these things can be tracked through Windows through uh, the built-in SNMP service that's real easy to turn on through group policy and uh, push it out to your entire network. I apologize, this slide is a little messed up there, but um, uh, when, we talk about, uh, when we talk about monitoring, um, our approach to monitoring with PRTG, uh, first of all, measuring, uh, with PRTG, we can do custom thresholds on everything we measure. Um, if you want a threshold at all, sometimes it's just something you're putting out there to see what it is. You're testing something, trying to do a proof of concept, trying to see if you need it. Um, uh, informing and alerting would be the next step. Um, letting you know when it reaches a current threshold on something and being able to put, it, put in your own thresholds that make sense to you. Not anything that we force on you. Uh, nothing in PRTG is forced on you from a standpoint of uh, thresholds. Everything is customizable. So it's completely customizable to your standpoint of what you decide to get alerted on. Do you have to define the custom thresholds or does it start to build high and low watermarks based upon history and then you can start to customize it after that point? Or is it you've got to customize it to have those high and low watermarks set period? By default, it doesn't have any thresholds, but what we will do is we will do unusual detection. Um, mm -hmm. Once the sensor's built, after a certain amount of time that we've collected enough data, we'll start to establish a baseline of how we Beautiful. Yeah, how we predict that sensor is going to behave. Absolutely. And then we tell you if it's stepping out of bounds, high or low. That's yeah. I like. How long does it take to get the baseline? On sixty-second scanning intervals, it's usually about uh, I think it's like five to seven days. Well, that's not bad. I'm yeah. expecting thirty. Yeah. You no, know, because yeah, no, yeah. it's <laughs> end of the month. Yeah. Like no, usually use thirty as a threshold anyway. It's pretty quick because I mean we're doing sixty-second scanning intervals. I mean what that's like. Uh, 1,440 scans a day, I think. So after five to seven days, we've got a lot of data that we can build trends with. Mm -hmm. um, analysis, uh, it wouldn't be worth having all this if we couldn't run reports and if we couldn't pull data for all this and have it in different formats to work with and also be able to give it to the people that are asking for it. So with PRTG, we can generate reports uh, in PDF form and send those out to people that need them, but we can also pull out the raw data uh, in CSV and XML, so you can dump it into any system you've got where you want to do any kind of analytics that are custom to you, even if it's just something as simple as dumping into an exchange and manipulating the data as you see fit for doing your own kind of predictive analysis for things that you would want to uh, take from there and, and work with. Uh, and then the last part being optimization. Um, we take all this information, we show you where the weak points are, we show you where the strong points are. Uh, and then the next step, of course, is to go out there and manipulate the hardware, the software, in such a way that it performs better. You know, once we find these holes or these spots where maybe we need to add additional RAM, maybe we need to add another virtual CPU to a machine to make it perform better, we want to add it to that so that not only it performs better, but we don't get any more alerts for it. Or if we do get more alerts for it, it's for something new going forward. Likewise, on the other side of it, um, especially when most of the people that we're talking to these days are virtualizing everything, uh, the hardware on those VM uh, hosts becomes very expensive. It's very, very expensive real estate. So if you've given a machine too much and it's not utilizing it, pull it back into the pool so that something else can utilize it. It's, uh, it's expensive storage, it's expensive RAM, and it's expensive processing. So you want to make sure that you're distributing it across everything in the right places and that it's not being wasted or anything like that.
but you're not limited to solely a you know a hardware a server ecosystem. You're collecting from router switches, exactly. other networking stuff, and exactly. anything that's we got yes. SNMP basically. Yeah, yeah, anything with SNMP, and then the WMI with that. You know, <coughs> yeah. we yeah. know who that is. <laughs> Uh, so at this time, I'm going to jump out of the slideshow and I'm going to jump into uh, a demo installation that we have. We always demo. like demo. Yes, practical I demo, know, practical yeah, application. Demo. Um, so we'll jump into the next section <coughs> here. And again, my name is Benjamin Day. I'm a senior systems engineer with Pessler. Uh, when we talk about PRTG, uh, the way we define things is at the sensor level. So a lot of different products out there, they may say that we monitor devices and that's how we license things, just that or the other. Uh, with PRTG, we license and we build everything around the sensor level. Uh, and so what is a sensor? Uh, in PRTG, everything you see here is a sensor. So ping is a sensor, uh, CPU is a sensor, disk free is a sensor, memory is a sensor. Um, the uh, host performance on a VMware I host is a sensor. Um, pretty much anything you would monitor is a sensor. Uh, and so you're thinking, okay, so I buy 500 so, sensors. So, so is a sensor a switch or a port on the switch? A port on the switch, yeah. So, same question, but is a sensor guests or a specific guest? A specific guest, okay. Yeah, so like if I dive into this uh, one VMware guest here, you'll see it's one sensor, but it's not one metric. These are channels within the sensor. Channels don't count against anything. Mm -hmm. So you see this one sensor here has about 12 different metrics that it's counting here. I see CPU ready, CPU usage, data store latency, memory. Negative downtime. No, that's the channel ID for downtime. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering how you were managing negative downtime. That's awesome. We're I would have been really impressed. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> This demo environment here, it's awesome. That's how we maintain it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, uh, it's four zeros. 104. <laughs> uh, memory consumption, network consumption. Uh, the other thing too, when it comes to memory consumption with PRTG, whether it's disk, whether it's RAM, anything like that, we're counting memory, we always give it to you in whole numbers and in percentages. This way there's no compromise. Most machines, you'll do percentage. I wanna know at 70%, <laughs> and 50% or something like that. But then there will be those one-off machines that have been on the network for 10 years that you know at a certain memory level, once it hits this, there's no coming back. That's mm -hmm. the unrecoverable, I have to go reboot it. So you want your threshold to be a number that's relevant to that. You don't wanna to have to sit there and get a calculator out and calculate the percentage. So that's why we give you both of those options there. And of course you can set thresholds on either one that you want. Uh, same thing with, um, uh, no, that's the only one where we break it up on percentage and whole numbers. Uh, likewise, same thing on like a, a CPU sensor here. So you'll see on, uh, on the CPU sensor here, where'd that guy go? This is, the, this is an SNMP based CPU sensor that's on an ESX host. So on the ESX host, we can talk to them through SOAP to get the, all the VMware metrics that we're pulling from vCenter. Um, but with VMware, you can turn on SNMP and there's a couple things we can get from it. Um, I like this sensor a lot better than just the one we do on our VMware one because on our VMware sensor, it's a single channel for CPU and it's just one gauge. And I just get a number per se, uh, a lot like this total number here. Uh, but with this right here, this is where I can break down granularity. This is where I can see at the individual logical processing unit itself, whether it's a core or a thread, what's going on. Uh, and then I can take it from there and go to graphing and start to understand trending, start to understand uh, are the cores getting utilized in a uniform fashion? Are there some that are just getting blasted all the time? And do they have an affinity to a certain VM? And is that VM behaving in a way that I expect it to, or is it, uh, being overutilized for a specific reason. Um, this is where we talk about the analysis with PRTG, being able to dive in and get these kind of metrics uh, and get alerted on them if we wanted to. You know, we could go in and we could set a total CPU usage. Uh, we could set a threshold on this guy if we wanted to just by clicking on it, going to enable limits. And here's where I can specify my upper limits, uh, lower limits, uh, and then a custom message I want displayed. Uh, and I can do both. So in some cases, most of the people out there will only do an upper limit on CPU. 
Uh, then there's a handful of people that may do a lower limit. They want to know when the processor's not being utilized because they realize, no, this thing should always be at like 20 to 40 percent is the normal operating zone. If Where does that message get displayed? It would get displayed in the message field for the sensor, which is this big bar right here. Oh, okay. Cool. This big green bar, and then if it's a warning, it turns yellow. If it's an error, it mm. turns red. Oh, so it's perfect. nice and big, grabs your attention, <coughs> whatever the message you had displayed would get displayed here. That's or uh, if it was another sensor type of, uh, say I didn't set that, and say I just left it blank, it would say total CPU usage is above or below whatever percentage I set for the threshold. It's, it's got stock stuff in there. Exactly, okay. yeah. Do you have any uh, examples where you've got things that are not okay? Yeah. So I can hit that just by clicking here, and I can see all my current down sensors. Uh, I can see all my current acknowledged sensors, warning sensors as well. So if I go into one of these right here, uh, let's say... Pokemon goes down. Oh, does Pokemon go down? Yes. Yeah. This is a major issue right here. Okay. <laughs> We're talking big problems here. Uh, this is actually one of our, uh, our cloud-based sensors, our cloud HTTP sensor. Um, so we do have... Uh, using the Amazon Cloud, we've got uh, PRTG installations in uh, the Asian region, uh, in the European region, and then two in uh, the U.S. on the east and west. Uh, and we're using PRTG installations there to leverage HTTP checks against a <laughs> URL that you give it. Uh, we have the same kind of sensor in a cloud ping sensor uh, that does the same thing. From those sites, you give it an IP and we ping it and we kind of give you an idea of what your global average is. And as you can see right there, the global average response time right now is 144 milliseconds. Is that what that is? The turning globe? Yeah, the turning globe is just turning to give you all the different points of where it's hitting at. This one right here is a really, really useful sensor for the larger customers we have that have a bit of a global footprint, or if they're using something like a VPN aggregator, or if they have a website that has global presence that they're trying to uh, reach a global presence with, like e-commerce or anything like that. This really helps them to figure out uh, if certain regions of the world are misbehaving and if they need to reach out to any resources they have over there. Like if uh, in Europe, all of a sudden, they're uh, the uh, response time skyrockets like 800 milliseconds, while in the U.S. it's down around you know 50 milliseconds or something like that. Uh, it just gives them that presence of mind to reach out, see what's currently going on, and see if there's anything they can do about that, or if it's just you know something going on in that region. But it makes them aware, so that they're not sitting there saying, "I don't know." They know what's going on as much as the next person in line knows, which is a far cry better from sitting there and saying, "I don't know." the three worst words you can ever say in IT when your boss comes in and wants to know what's going wrong. So you can see here with all these sensors, we're covering a vast majority of different things here. Um, one of the other things I want to po point out too, uh, while well I can see it real quick here, um, the use of remote probes here. So with PRTG, collapse this one here so you can kind of get a better understanding here. Uh, when you install PRTG, you get your local probe. That's the local machine that PRTG is installed on. Uh, but what if we're trying to monitor something that's in a network that's not natively connected to that? What if there's firewalls in the way and we don't want to have to turn in requests to get you know all these ports opened up for WMI and SNMP and all this other stuff that we want to try to do? Uh, we can utilize uh, what we call our remote probe. Uh, it's free, there's no additional licensing for it or anything like that. You just install it on a host in that environment. There's a single port that gets opened on the firewall. It connects back to the core server, uh, encrypts the traffic 256-bit SSL, uh, and it allows you to then use that remote probe as a monitoring point in those, uh, those non-natively connected networks. Uh, one of the big use cases I see for this, customers will install their core server in Amazon or Azure and have the high availability up there so that it's always up and running, it can always email out, uh, it's always gonna stay running. Then they'll put a remote probe in their local network, monitor their local network from there, but if they ever have any kind of an outage from internet connectivity or anything like that, they can still get alerting because their core server that's handling reporting email notifications, all that stuff is out in the cloud where the high availability is much higher than what they would be able to experience or replicate on their local system. 
Uh, same thing could be said like if you have uh, a central office and branch offices. Um, this is really popular with our customers that run like a franchise model um, or anything like that. They can have a, a core server installed at their data center and then they can have remote probes installed in all their branch offices, monitor that equipment, have it all come back, and then two, uh, we can do QoS between our core server and that remote probe. So if they're leasing a big MPLS circuit from one of the big providers, they can use that data to ensure that they're getting the best possible performance on that MPLS circuit. Because like everyone here would agree, those are not cheap. Even if you have just like five different connections or 20 or 100 different connections, uh, that can end up being a major cost point in your IT operation budget. What's the discovery phase look like to actually populate out the... Yeah. So when you first install PRTG, um, it will do an auto discovery uh, just from what it can find on mm -hmm. the network things you give it. So it'll, it'll look at the gateway and or it'll look at its IP and mask, figure out what kind of network it's on. And it'll go from there and try to discover the local network. Mm -hmm. um, without any credentials, it's really just going out and grabbing devices and putting um, like ping sensors and port scanning sensors like HTTP, RDP, mm -hmm. stuff like that on it. Once you give it credentials like SNMP community strings, mm -hmm. WMI credentials, things like that, uh, you can redo discovery again, and then it'll go out and really start to pull in the big metrics and stuff. A um, hundred devices would probably take maybe two to three hours to get done. Most of the users, what they'll end up doing <coughs> when they want to do a big, like the big initial discovery, they'll wait till the end of the day. They'll turn it loose and let it run overnight. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the other thing about Discovery 2, we can schedule it to run uh, at different intervals. We can have it run once, uh, hourly, uh, daily, or weekly. Now, if you've discovered something, does that count against your, 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 your ticket, as it were? And is there ways to restrict that back? Uh, the b best example is, all right, cool, discovered all these printers. I don't want to pay for all these printers. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I just care about my networking stuff. Yeah. Oh, all these, no, no, stop it. Focus on the things well, I want. At that point, how's it licensed? How do you pay for it? Yeah. So we license by sensors. Uh, we uh, have sensor uh, licenses starting at 500 sensors and then going up to 1,000, 2,500, 5,000 unlimited. Um, but they're not named. It's really just a pool. So you, if you run discovery and it finds stuff that you don't want, you just delete them and you get the seats back. So it's it's not anything hard like that. Because I had a thing, yeah. a product in the past, and it's like, all right, cool. I, I want you to find the stuff I care about. No, we found a bunch of stuff you don't care about. <laughs> and then and you're done. <laughs> That's all you get. <laughs> Printers <laughs> and, the, and, and dumb switches. Then no, you have I, to I go, want important you have to go change the SNP community strings and all yeah. the printers, delete yes. the database, start mm -hmm. again. Yeah. But with PRTG, you'd actually probably want to monitor printers because we do have a sensor for printers that's fairly universal and will give you all the cool things like toner level, paper level, if there's a jam or anything like that. And to the high level networking stuff, it's probably detrimental, but to the day-to-day -day IT department, it can be awesome to have those printers grouped together. If they pay for it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. uh, I mean, it'd be absolutely awesome. Yeah. But I mean, you're talking about maybe two sensors per printer, a ping to it, and then an SNMP printer sensor to it. Um, but what's cool about that is, is that now you can have PRTG watching that, and if a toner level gets too low, you can have an email go out to the guy in IT that's responsible for that, he goes and takes care of it before it becomes an issue. Oh yeah, before. that'll make the help desk guys hate the network guys. <laughs> <laughs> the monitor. Yeah, yeah, but when I think about that and the impacts, I, I just remember you know, doing an active scan for Lexmark or HP mm -hmm. LaserJet stuff, and then bringing down the entire <coughs> global organization. Yeah, yeah. First is in bad. You know, let's kick this up on a, on a Thursday and let's go on vacation. You know? <laughs> so you can email when a condition happens. Can I do something else? We can email. Uh, we can send SMS notifications through uh, third parties like bulk SMS or PagerDuty. We can also utilize. Um, IP enabled uh, SMS gateway devices like an SMS Eagle or anything like that. Um, we can also send you a push notification to your smart device if you have the PRTG app on it that's available for uh, BlackBerry as an Android app. Uh, Windows. <laughs> BlackBerry? BlackBerry as an Android app. Uh, Android, iOS, and Windows. Phone. Windows? 
Probably no, not. No, we there's, don't. There's no. One, there's one person we, watching video who cares. <laughs> we, John, we, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we had it. Uh, we had it, but then we. Uh, I think we deprecated it because, yeah, we had such a. Yeah, there was almost they yeah. deprecated themselves. There was all. There was no one using it. Um, uh, but yeah, <laughs> with the with the mobile app, you can connect back to your peer to G. You can get notifications that you can get push me push messages through it. Um, we can do all the little fun stuff like sending out a, a syslog message, an SNP trap message, or an event log message. So if you've got Splunk or any other kind of site B You can ignore about, it in more locations. Yes. <laughs> what about like some type of auto rumination? I want to do something. I want to yeah. kick off yeah. a script. I want to. Mm -hmm. uh, we can execute a script. I want to bug Howard. Yeah, right. it can. It can we'll be. Always want to bug Howard. <laughs> it, it can be an executable uh, uh, batch file, PowerShell file, VB script, Python, anything like that. Um, I'll just, just Slack. What's that? Talk to Slack. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Well, no. No. Actually, yeah. No, seriously, does it integrate right. well with Slack? Uh, I mean, I hate Slack, as, but you know. As far as custom <laughs> integrations like that go, we don't have anything that we have built in. Uh, we leave a lot of that to the user base. Mm. The user base with PRTG is a very uh, active user base. One of the more active that I've seen in terms of people getting in there and creating integrations with things, but then also uh, sharing it on the knowledge base. Oh, sure. And He's then, such a new company. I mean, he's only barely yeah. 20 years old. <laughs> yes. Someone's done that, and they have instructions on how to do that. Did you find that? They're right there, yeah. Okay, cool. Hey, IRC? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I got that that's slack. Under that. Um, uh, but one of the other notifications we can do as well is kicking off a, uh, a, a web action. So uh, that's really, really popular for some of the larger enterprise ticketing systems that have uh, an HTTP API. Mm -hmm. You can have PRTG, rather than just send your ticketing system an email, you can actually have it reach out to the ticketing system and feed into the ticketing system the device, the device's IP, the actual message that got generated, um, anything else about the event that happened that's relevant to your ticketing system and what you're tracking. Uh, and we have a whole slew of, uh, of uh, dynamic um, uh, placeholders that are relevant to that. So it's not just boilerplate stuff here. It's real information that's usable for whatever the event has happened that can get thrown to your ticketing system. So now, mm -hmm. whoever gets that ticket doesn't have to spend time going, oh, look, it emailed me that this thing happened. Now I have to go get into this and you know really dive into it and try to find out what happened. No, it can actually feed in all So there are lots of integrations into ticketing systems, like Remedy and other um, ticketing systems, I don't remember. Uh, <laughs> the, I know the one we, oh, Sorry, Remedy. what's that one called? <laughs> Well, the, there's uh, service now. Thank you. That yeah, uh, service mesh. Um, things with service. Lab Mercury. Tech. Uh, Lab Tech is uh, there. We've got a. There's a third party company out there that has uh, an integration with uh, the has written a PRTG integration with Lab Tech. Mm -hmm. um, oh God, Remedy. Wow, that took me back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I flashbacks. It's oh really my cool. gosh, I had to like it kicked something <laughs> in my head and then a whole... How does it stack up against HP Open? I mean, like, well, conversations no, that should no, never no. happen. 